Overgaard struggled against the minus 20 degrees Celsius cold, digging the thick snow aside. He threw away even the smallest pieces of snow, trying to expose the black soil in the trench. He sighed and continued working, suppressing his fatigue. After a while, the bell on his watch rang. He turned it off and packed up his things, heading back to the nearby plane. Behind him, a giant SOS signal was visible on the ice. Overgaard had been stranded in the Arctic for six months, carving out that message. Back in the plane, he carefully cut a piece of fish and put it in his mouth, chewing slowly. The raw arctic fish was hard to eat, tasting like rotten meat. But even the most unpalatable food becomes bland after eating it for more than five months. After eating, Overgaard took out his signal flare gun and climbed to the top of a hill. He cranked the generator to send out a weak signal, hoping for a response. But the silence around him was deafening. Overgaard kept cranking for a long time, but no one could hear him. In the arctic, there is no day or night, and Overgaard could only rely on his watch to judge the time. If his biological clock became disrupted, he would collapse. Looking at the distant scenery, Overgaard wondered how long such days would last. If he couldn't find rescue, death was his only option. Back in the plane, he took off his shoes and prepared to sleep, the harsh cold had frozen his feet. Even so, he never gave up hope of survival. After waking up, he did his usual routine. He used all his strength to dig out the foundation stones and throw them out of the trench, then sat down exhausted and prayed silently. However, Overgaard couldn't wait for the rescuers. But instead encountered danger when he returned to the fishing lake. He found that the fish tank had been damaged and the fish inside were gone. Large footprints in the snow indicated an impending danger. Overgaard ran into the cabin, terrified, and locked the door. He sat on the bed, panting. He told himself to calm down. After composing himself, he went outside with his signal flare gun and climbed to the top of the hill. Overgaard scanned the surroundings, afraid that something terrifying would suddenly appear and tear him to pieces. But after several hours, the radio still received no signal. He was a little disappointed, so he looked into the distance and saw a polar bear standing nearby, seemingly waiting for him to be at his weakest before delivering a fatal blow. He didn't dare stay any longer and hurriedly ran back to the plane, locking all the doors and going to bed early. The next day, he went out again. Perhaps his courage from the previous day was rewarded today. He caught three fish and put them in the iron box. He climbed the mountain again and turned on the signal transmitter. After a few hours, the bell on his watch rang again. He was exhausted and ready to leave, but at that moment, the machine suddenly turned on. He held onto it, thinking he was hallucinating. He cranked the handle continuously, and the green light flashed continuously, indicating a very fast chance of survival. A helicopter appeared in the distance, and Overgaard shouted excitedly. He quickly took out the signal flare and waved it at the helicopter. The helicopter also spotted Overgaard and flew towards him, getting closer and closer. Overgaard smiled with joy, waving his hands excitedly to welcome his rescuers. But no one expected that as the helicopter approached the ground, a strong gust of wind hit it, causing it to lose control and crash. Overgaard was stunned, his eyes filled with despair. After calming down, he took a deep breath and ran towards the helicopter. After opening the door, he saw two male pilots who were already dead, and a woman who was still breathing. The blizzard was getting worse. He closed the door in the cramped cockpit and treated her wounds. Suddenly, the girl opened her eyes. Overgaard hadn't talked to anyone in six months. He greeted her excitedly, expecting an answer. Unexpectedly, the girl was still not fully awake. She opened her eyes slightly and then passed out again. After treating her wounds, he also felt tired and fell asleep. When he woke up in the cabin, the blizzard outside had stopped. He leaned over to hear her breathing and found that her condition had stabilized. So he started rummaging through the belongings to prepare to leave. He found an ice pick, two signal flares, and a map, as well as a box of instant noodles. In the Arctic, this was a rare delicacy. After packing up, Overgaard removed the door and dragged the girl back to his place. Struggling to survive alone, Overgaard found himself with another mouth to feed. Despite the challenges, he embraced the responsibility, determined to care for her. While she slept, Overgaard returned to the helicopter. He respectfully buried the male pilot and searched for any useful supplies. By the grace of God, he found a gas canister and a lighter in the man's pocket. Overgaard was overjoyed. It was the first time he had seen fire in six months. Before leaving, he stumbled upon a photo that left him deep in thought. After hesitating, he pocketed the photo and returned to his shelter with the supplies. He placed the photo by the window and then cleaned the woman's wounds. After finishing, Overgaard lit the gas stove and closed his eyes in appreciation. But soon, guilt washed over him. The photo showed the woman's family of three, and he was still struggling to survive. One day, he caught a large salmon. Overgaard rejoiced and cooked a salmon noodle soup using the gas stove. He cut a piece of fish and put it in his mouth, savoring the deliciousness. 
Resisting the urge to devour it all, he used a plastic fork to pick up a piece of fish, blew on it, and fed it to the woman. She was still in a daze and only ate a tiny bit before closing her mouth again. Seeing her condition, he comforted her, don't worry, rescue will come soon. But a week passed without any sign of help. He sat on the mountaintop, cranking the generator helplessly, his hope gradually fading. To make matters worse, the wound cleaning solution was almost running out. The woman started to have a fever, her eyes tightly shut as she fought the pain. Overgaard sat beside her, his heart in turmoil. He wanted to wait for rescue but couldn't bear to see her struggle with death. Suddenly, the unconscious woman gripped Overgaard's hand. He froze for a moment, realizing that it was purely instinctual. With that, Overgaard grasped her hand tightly, no longer hesitating, and decided to seek help. Action speaks louder than words, Overgaard drew the root on the map, then packed all the stored fish, scooped up a bottle of water, packed up the equipment, and put the woman in the sleeping bag. Before leaving, he took a last look at the plane, then walked away without looking back. Overgaard dragged the sled on the Snow White Hill without a single person. Although he had prepared mentally, the difficulty on the way still exceeded Overgaard's imagination. He climbed up the mountain slope, holding the map to check, and found that several hours had passed, and they had only traveled less than one-tenth of the way. This distance was really too different compared to the total journey, but he did not give up. Overgaard returned to the sled, constantly encouraging himself, then put on his backpack and continued on his way. Five hours passed, the alarm rang again, reminding Overgaard to rest. He found a place to avoid the wind, used a shovel to dig a hole, and put the woman inside. Fortunately, she had recovered better. She could understand what Overgaard said and had some strength in her body. Overgaard saw a glimmer of hope. Wait for the woman to recover, and they will soon arrive. After a night's rest, they set off again. But things didn't go as Overgaard expected. Halfway there, a steep mountain stood in the way. Overgaard took out the map to confirm that he had not gone the wrong way, but it would be impossible to cross with the woman and supplies. It would take more time to go around, and he didn't know when he would arrive. Overgaard climbed to the top of the mountain and saw a flat road ahead. He hesitated. This road is easy to walk, but if he abandons the woman and only Overgaard goes on the road, he can get there in a day. Overgaard thought while pulling the supplies up the mountain. Hesitating for a while, he decided to try to pull the woman up. But the car was too heavy, not only couldn't it be pulled up, but it also made him fall down because of the failure. Overgaard knelt down and gasped, looking at the flat road ahead, then looking at the supplies beside him with a confused mind. In the end, kindness triumphed over reason. Overgaard crossed out the path on the map and took the woman in a different direction. This time they were relatively lucky. On the way, they found a corner of the mountain where they could rest. Overgaard stuffed all the things inside, then used a snow scraper to block the entrance. It was very warm in the cave, but the girl's condition made Overgaard extremely worried, because being in the cold for too long caused her to get a fever. Not only was it difficult to eat, but even drinking water was challenging. As he sat despondently, the gas stove nearby flickered a few times before gradually extinguishing altogether. Before he could devise a plan, a new danger emerged. A polar bear had followed them to this location. Clearly famished, it decided to attack, its face poking into the cave crevice where Overgaard and the other person were sheltered. Though fearful, Overgaard did not show weakness, instead shouting back. In a moment of desperation, he retrieved a valuable signal flare and threw it with all his might outside. Witnessing this for the first time, the polar bear, frightened, retreated. Inside the cave, Overgaard continued to cry out until it was confirmed that the bear had left, then he collapsed in exhaustion. When daylight broke, he cautiously emerged from the cave, scanning everywhere, confirming the bear was no longer nearby. He then joyously discovered that the snowmobile was undamaged. However, his relief was short-lived as he had a premonition that the road ahead would not be peaceful. Indeed, after only two hours of travel, they encountered a snowstorm. Despite the bone-chilling cold, Overgaard pressed forward to find shelter. However, the path they took led to a windward slope, leaving them nowhere to seek refuge from the elements. Determined, Overgaard secured the snowmobile on the snow and then crawled into his sleeping bag, pulling the drawstring tight. He huddled in the darkness, waiting for the judgment of fate, unsure of how long it would be until the snowstorm subsided. Overgaard managed to survive the ordeal, but his fingers were stiff from prolonged inactivity, causing intense pain with every movement. Despite the agony, he refused to give up. After dragging the snowmobile for a long while, they finally reached a windbreak. At this time, the snow was very thick, but fortunately there was no strong wind. Overgaard went to the foot of the mountain to rest and burn his shirt, hoping to warm the girl up. After giving the girl water to drink, Overgaard took her hand and squeezed it hard to check her condition. But this time, no matter how Overgaard called, the girl did not respond. He felt anxious and pulled the zipper of the sleeping bag back up, then leaned next to her, his eyes filled with sadness. Her condition did not improve at all. 
He didn't know how long he had been asleep. When he opened his eyes, he hurriedly opened the sleeping bag and was devastated to find that the miracle had not happened to her. Her wounds had worsened, were severely infected, had destroyed her immune system, causing her mouth to bleed and her cheeks to turn red. Although he didn't want to leave her behind, he wanted to save his own life even more. So he took out the photo and quietly placed it in her hand, then gently helped her wipe the blood from the corner of her mouth, pulled the sleeping bag back up, and left alone. On the way, he saw a flower and was surprised because there could be no plants living here, he had to hurry up. Unexpectedly, he slipped and fell into the cave, Overgard found his leg trapped under a rock. Overgard wanted to pull his leg out, but a sharp pain hit him. Overgard stared at the entrance of the cave, tears streaming down his face. After crying for a while, Overgard regained his composure. He didn't want to die like this. If he died, he had to die under the sun. Overgard sat up and used his strength to push the rock, trying to pull his leg out. After a scream of pain, he finally managed to escape. But his leg was cut with a deep wound. Overgard crawled out of the cave, trying to crawl to the woman, opened the sleeping bag wanting to die with her. The girl woke up, her symptoms also completely subsided. She looked at him and weakly said hello. Overgard couldn't help but burst into tears. He kept apologizing and blaming himself for leaving. The girl was not angry, but weakly comforted him. The girl's change made Overgard regain his spirit. Overgard scooped handfuls of snow onto the wound to soothe the pain. After applying a simple bandage, he limped forward, dragging the sled behind him. Time passed, and the girl finished the last drops of water and the last of their food. After an unknown amount of time, they reached a steep slope. Overgard could no longer endure it and collapsed. He rested for a while, then threw away all their belongings and crawled up the slope alone. Before he died, Overgard wanted to bring the girl to see the view on the other side. To his surprise, when he reached the top of the mountain, he saw a helicopter parked nearby. Then he slid down the slope, trying to push the girl up. He held up the flare gun and waved it at the helicopter. When the flare went out, Overgard took off his down jacket and burned it, hoping that someone would see him. But the helicopter flew away, passing behind the mountain and disappearing from sight. Overgard had no strength left to cry. He softly comforted the girl, saying that everything was okay and that she was not alone. Then they lay down on the ground and held hands. In the distance, the helicopter appeared again, slowly descending and rescuing the two. The episode ends here. Thank you for watching.